you're nodding. Hey guys, we're at Trent's farm. You can look around a little bit. We got the 3D target in the front yard here. Is this the front yard or the backyard? It's both yards. We get a lot of questions um, throughout the year about mouth reads and our our signature series of calls that we came out with there's three of them there's a one with the black there's a blue one and then there's also a yellow one people ask you know what's the best one if i was only to buy one that is why we created three of them because it's super difficult for us to predict the shape of your mouth there are so many things that go into how this makes a noise and how you specifically are going to make one that we made each one a little bit different what I mean by that is the latex in these um, have a certain stretch to each one of them and a certain thickness in the actual latex themselves. We did this because we thought we could make a mouth read that would hopefully be probably the easiest to put in your mouth for the first time having never used a mouth call before and make a sound. When we say make a sound we mean hit that high note because what we're trying to do is we're using a tube with nothing in it, we're putting this in our mouth and we're trying to get that high note, that high pitch that a bull elk makes to mimic the bugle the best you can. If you if you don't hit that high note, a lot of times you won't get a response. So that's what these were designed for, is to make it as simple as possible for basically the beginner, all the way up to the intermediate and advanced. The black one will give you probably the highest pitch. The black and the blue are supposed to get to that highest pitch and I would say if you're a beginner caller, those would be the ones that I would start out with and then move from there based on, you know, if you can put it in your mouth and make a sound, pick which one you can make the sound the easiest and go from there. There's a lot of variables to cover on how to make a sound. First of all is position in your mouth. Each person's palate in their mouth is like a fingerprint. It's different for every single person. So some people have a really wide and narrow, uh, some people have a really wide palate, some people have a very narrow palate, which creates a, a depth to it that can be hard to get the seal. So for me, I have a little narrower palate and it, the arch goes up a little bit more. So one of the things that works for me is I take this reed here and I will cut it down to this size here. All I did was just take about an eighth inch off of this side and an eighth inch off of this side. Right where that, see that little cut mark is there? I just start right there and I cut straight right there. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be pretty. I'm just taking those flanges off so then it'll actually go up into the palette a little better, get that seal and help me make that sound. That's one trick that I use. What I, I would recommend you do is start with using this, try to make a sound. If you're just getting <laughs> and you're not getting a noise, then you may want to try to trim here, trim a sixteenth off, try it, trim another sixteenth off, try it, and a lot of times that will correct something very quick. My buddy Tim, uh, he could not blow a mouth read. He convinced me that he couldn't. We just trimmed off these sides and within 40 minutes or so, he was blowing bugles. So try that guys, it's a quick tip for you that might help you get to that next level if you're first starting out. Okay, so I just want to show you real quick what I was meaning by trimming these and how it can make a sound. I just took this out of the package and we're going to just blow a bugle just out of the gate. So I can feel that there's air getting by there. Now let's compare it to the one I trimmed. This was from last year, by the way, that we used in the project. It actually seals it off a little bit and it's a little bit louder. If I pointed it at you guys, it would have been super loud. I position mine right in the middle center of my palate. Cody, he pulls his down right by his, right at the top of his teeth on the inside. Each person is different how they put it in their mouth. And a lot of people, you know, the gag reflex, there's a, a hard palate's right in the top and then there's a line in the back where your soft palate starts. If this thing touches that soft palate line, you're gonna gag and that's the whole trick to it a lot of people think well I can't use it well sometimes you could trim off that back so it doesn't hit that soft palate line and you won't get that gag reflex so trust me I'm a dentist okay guys so um, I just put this right in the middle of my palate most people the biggest reason why they can't get from zero to making a call and they think they can't use a mouth call is because we are people that get embarrassed really easy 
I've sat down with so many people and I'm like, well, just show me what sound you can make. And they literally don't even want to put the call in their mouth and make a sound because they feel like in, they're sounding dumb. Well, you got to get past that. Just give yourself five hours to where you don't care how it's going to sound and just keep doing it. And that will get you from point A to point B. I put mine right in the center. And what I do is I kind of, you kind of smile when you smile. It brings your cheeks out and that and instead of blowing air off your tongue you're kind of trapping the air you're not going if I go I'm blowing air across it but no you want to trap it and then you just got to tame that down just a little bit See how I'm kind of smiling when I do it? You see, I'm making different sounds, not by how much air I'm blowing out, but how I'm moving my facial features. Smile, kind of like that squinty. You can move it to the side a little bit, and that's how I get my sounds. And I see Cody doing the same thing. It's not about how much air you blow across this. It's about how you just move those subtle changes and like Ty, for example, he'll do a tiny little. And a lot of times that'll get the bull from 100 yards to 25 yards in your lap. So try those little things and it might help you a whole bunch in just starting out using a mouth read for the first time. So Trent wanted me to go over real quick how I bugle personally. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say, guys? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We are all different in the way we do it. The way I blow a call is totally different than the way Trevor blows a call is totally different than the way Cody blows a call. He stands in his bathroom in the mirror and takes his shirt off and I think he practices night and day just to hear himself in the mirror, Cody? I believe. Yeah, I think he does. I'm almost positive he does. Really? Yeah, yeah, his wife said so. But yeah, Good. so everybody does it a little bit different. Well, this is my first day practicing for the year. This is Trevor's first so. day practicing and we don't want to mention do the guys, date. Do you want me to take? You want me to you want take, take this one, Rod? Yeah, yeah. It. Take your shirt off. And uh... um, well, Trent said that you know we all we all practice different, we all call different, but guess what? We all pull elk in from outside bow range, inside bow range. So you don't have to sound a certain way. I think you just have to hit a high note, and that keys the bull in to reacting to you, and that's it. Just try to hit the high note. That is important. That is the high note. If I pull this away. Still, I'm trapping the air. I'm not going. So it's like if you put, if you put a birthday cake in front of you with candles in it. I should be able to blow this right in front of the birthday cake and not blow the candles out. There's no air there. It's not where you're pushing air. So try to trap it. Sound like a gorilla. And then the lip ball, you're just going <laughs> And that's just a spitty mess. But that's how you do it. You just mess around with moving a little up or a little down or left or right just to hit so your lips are moving, going and that makes that lip ball sound. And that's how you get that guttural growl, if you want. Different reeds will give you different tones for higher or lower. Those are kind of the quick and dirty tips on doing the lip ball, hitting the high note, and uh, just getting the sound out by trapping the air instead of blowing the air across your tongue. So good luck, guys. And uh, I hope this year this one works for you. And please, send us a message and let us know. Thanks.